As promised, here is a short breakdown of my scene. If you want to do a lot of camera animation, setting up a camera rig is the best option. This way you can easily control everything with a few well-placed sliders. Since I have multiple cameras in the scene, I use the stage object to switch camera. Selecting the main camera, you can see I haven't keyframed anything. But there's an expressive reference to the control panel here. It's being driven by a slider on my main control panel. You can see the expressive reference here. The camera rig consists of two circles. Circles are great for camera controlling because you get most of the animation for free. As I move the first circle up and down, the camera attached to it moves along, while also focusing on a point in the center of the scene. This way I don't need to animate the position or rotation of the camera. The second circle is the control panel, and it's not supposed to be animated. You can see the Y position has an expressor reference here as well. I created a new button with user data. The user data is useful if you want to create your own panels or menus. This panel controls all the movement of the main camera. The first three sliders control the height, rotation and radius of the parent circle. This last slider controls the camera rotation. In the timeline I mark down the different sections of the music to correctly time the camera movement. I also added chapter markers, green, that helps me structure my camera hierarchy. In the timeline you can see all the keyframes for the control circle, using the four sliders. Starting with height animation, I started with a rapid move, then followed up with a slow linear continuation. Then I did a frame by frame cut to quickly move around the scene. Moving on to the radius. I really paid a lot of attention to the music to try and find the best move for a specific part. For the rotation I used linear moves with no easing to make the hardest possible transition always followed by a slow linear continuation, then another frame by frame transition to spice it up. The camera rotation is more subtle and is just for adding the last touch. In between the main camera I did some micro scenes using one or multiple camera setups. For this section, each camera only has very little movement. Then for this section, I use a single camera to make hard transitions all the way in. Here you can see the frame by frame cuts. Each step has an extra keyframe to extend the cut of the frame. Otherwise, it becomes really hard to notice what's going on. As before, I continue the movement so nothing is standing still. For the light setup, on the opposite side of the scene, I placed it using Expresso. The idea is that it's always in front of the camera, but Expresso seemed a bit unstable in this case. Here you can clearly see it having trouble either moving before or falling behind. I have since learned that you can set the priority higher, so it calculates the movement earlier in the process. To better illustrate the importance of a camera rig, I've set up this simple product scene. On each camera there is a target tag looking at the product, and each camera is being controlled by a null that is either being animated by itself or is attached to some other form of control point. This first node moves along the Z-axis, and that's all that it does. The camera has a target tag attached, which points to the product. Same with this camera. It looks at the product, while the node moves on the Y-axis. In this way, you don't have to control where the camera points, and that's a real time saver. 
This null is attached to a circle using an align to spline tag. The last null is attached to a spline path. Then I animated the slider inside the align to spline tag. Since the target on the camera always looks at the product, I don't have to worry about animating the position or rotation at all.